everyone. It's Michael Goosebumps fan. I want to tell you first and foremost, I am so sorry <laughs> that I've been gone after making an announcement of a, of a video about two weeks ago about coming back and making more videos and stuff. After taking a little bit of a break for like a month, it really turned into a month and a half <laughs> because I didn't come back for like two more weeks after making that video. And I'm sorry for that. I got sucked into playing Silent Hill 4 again for the billionth time. Uh, I did some movie reviews on my other channel called Strange Michael where I review horror films and some other things. I'm going to start getting into regular films and stuff as well. Uh, those are becoming edited videos again, so there's a lot of stuff like that in case you want to check out that stuff. So if I'm not uploading content here and you do like either just my content and me talking or if you like just movie reviews in general or horror films, Strange Michael is my other channel. I think there's a lot of stuff there that you might like. I uh, wanted to let you know that ahead of time. I am really sorry. I know that it, it comes across as a douchey kind of attitude to just walk away after making a video about coming back. I'm sorry for that. Uh, it took me a little while to get through this book just because I wasn't in a reading mood. You ever been in a mood like that? I mean, for us Goosebumps fans, there is a lot of books to read. I mean, a lot of books from the franchise, especially if you've been a collector and been collecting old books. Uh, this is an older book from the 90s. It's a Give Yourself Goosebumps book. It's one of the special editions, as a matter of fact. It's book number five from the Power Play Special Edition Give Yourself Goosebumps books. I talked about it in my previous comeback <laughs> video. Uh, it's called The Curse of the Cave Creatures. I enjoyed this so much. This was such a welcome surprise. It's a great example of why Give Yourself Goosebumps books are so much fun and so enjoyable. The covers for a lot of these power play books don't look that great. This is kind of an exception to that a little bit. I don't mind this cover that much, but it's a great example of why the covers aren't as great on these books versus the original classic books or even like something like the newer books with Slappy World, which I think are some of the best Goosebumps covers in a while. Uh, even though the books are kind of a mixed bag a lot of the time, uh, the newer Slappy World covers look pretty great in my opinion. Um, Curse of the Cave Creatures, is it? Yeah, Cave Creatures, not Cave Creature, which is a little odd. I'll get into that why. Um, I enjoyed this. It's such a weird fantasy type book. If you love fantasy and you love these give yourself goosebumps, you know, choose your own adventure type books, because that's basically what this is for anybody who doesn't know. If you like this kind of book, if you love the give yourself goosebumps books, this is a high recommendation for me. It's not like an amazing book, but it's good, especially if you like a fantasy type book. Goosebumps doesn't have a whole lot of fantasy-esque books, so when you have something like that come through, it kind of surprises me. It's something kind of cool. It's kind of like when you have the comic book themed ones, like Robbie Schwartz uh, versus Dr. Maniac, or, uh, you know, the, the Attack of the Mutants, you know, something like that. It's a very welcome surprise and something very different, in my opinion. This is a great example of a very different type of Goosebumps book that was very good for what it was. Um, I have my issues with it. I'll get into that as the review goes on. This will probably be a lengthier video because I haven't made a video for you guys in a while. I apologize once again. I'm very sorry it's taken me so long to get around to doing this. I've just gotten taken out and distracted by so many things. <laughs> you know, I'm sorry about that. Uh, but Silent Hill 4 is a great game. Forgive me. It's great. I, I even did a video on that on the Strange Michael channel. Getting back to this review, though, uh, essentially you, since these books are written for a first person, uh, you are going to visit your cousin Dennis and his little sister Nancy, who live in Arizona, kind of out in the middle of nowhere in Arizona, which Arizona itself, for anybody who doesn't know anything about Arizona, it's kind of in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> it's kind of desert land almost. It's almost like the Middle East, but in the U.S., and uh, not that harsh, <laughs> not that harsh, but it's there. And essentially, you're going to visit them for your, I guess, summer vacation, pretty much. And you and Dennis are walking down the woods. Nancy is not with you, but Nancy always wants you to play with her. She's like five years old, so she's kind of naggy about that whole thing. Dennis won't follow you up to the cave that you happen to see out in the woods that you want to go visit and see what it's like. You climb all the way up there. Dennis stays behind because he's being a brat. He's kind of an older kid. He's like a year older than you. He's a bully, kind of a mean-spirited kid. He steals your stuff all the time throughout the book. Um, that sucks <laughs> in certain situations. Um, essentially... Dennis is going to stay behind, you go up and you go to the cave, and it turns out you have to move a big old stone out of the way, kind of like a Jesus tomb type of thing, and you go inside of the cave and you happen to find this shiny bear skull, and the walls are covered inside of this cave with, like, caveman drawings and paintings like that, like art, you know? It's kind of neat as a concept. I think it would be, if this didn't have the name Goosebumps on it, it would be a really cool movie to have for, like, younger kids and horror fans that are kids and teenagers and stuff. It'd be really cool for that kind of audience. I really think so. But with, if you put this out there as a movie and had the name Goosebumps slapped on it, a lot of people would be offended to say, it's not a Goosebumps movie, just like they do with the movies that are out there right now, like Haunted Halloween and the original one from 2015. You don't want that out there. Uh, <laughs> but it's good. I really recommend the story. Uh, the Shiny Bear Skull, though, you're picking it up. It's weird. It's a warm thing, but it's in the middle of a cave. It's kind of, you know, by itself. It shouldn't be warm. It's almost like it's alive, almost. 
and you happen to drop it because you have butterfingers and it drops and it shatters <laughs> essentially and fog starts coming out of this thing right and you start seeing all these animal faces and stuff I guess if animals have faces they all kind of look the same that might be speciesist I don't know but uh, they kind of do anyway the animal faces are looking back at you and essentially you kind of go into panic mode but then all of a sudden this shaman shows up inside of the cave I know this is sounding weird just hang in there with me this shaman guy shows up uh, which is essentially like a priest type of thing not like a Christian priest but like another thing well a Catholic priest but like something else like a like an Indian type of thing he shows up and he tells the spirits to be gone and essentially he tells you now that you have broken this skull that was kind of uh, an ancient artifact type thing hidden away in this cave with all this art all over the walls and stuff these art pictures these drawings on side of the art of this cave are victims of this cave creature this cave spirit right and this cave spirit's gonna start coming after you now. Now you're the target because you shattered the skull. And you're gonna have to either take the powers or weapons from this shaman. You either get the powers to become a spellcaster. Yeah, that's where the fantasy element comes in, which I think is really cool. I honestly think that R.L. Stein or whoever put this book together, it's one of those books, I don't know if R.L. Stein wrote this. It's very creative, so it wouldn't surprise me if Stein put, put this book together himself. It almost feels at times like the finale of Deathly Hollows Part 2 from the Harry Potter series. It feels like when you see Harry and Voldemort at one point and they're shooting the wands at each other across that graveyard looking thing. It, I swear, dude, the way it's written at times, it comes across like that scene from the film, right? It's real weird. It's almost like Stein knew it was coming before it actually happened. But anyway, <laughs> or whoever wrote this, whatever, maybe Rowling wrote this, I don't know. But uh, you can either do that and be a spellcaster, which is kind of a wizard type thing and have a wand and some other little spells you know how to cast. Or you can be a hunter and have weapons, like swords and all that kind of stuff. And I'll tell you now, of course, when I read these books, I read every single ending. Uh, I read every single option throughout the entire book and use tons and tons of bookmarks for anybody who doesn't know that, who watches my videos, if you're new to the channel, whatever. Uh, which, by the way, we're almost at 700 subscribers. That's pretty cool. Uh, thank you guys for showing up and subscribing and being around here. I love you guys so much. Thank you, really honestly, from the bottom of my heart. Uh, the hunter story is great. The Spellcaster story is great. Both of the options, either way you go, you're going to have a blast reading this, I think. I think most people would enjoy this. I think most younger readers would enjoy this. I think most adults who are either Goosebumps fans or fantasy fans specifically will enjoy this. Even if you're not a horror or Goosebumps fan and you like fantasy, check this book out. This could be a great introduction to Goosebumps for you, the way it's written, the kind of tone that it uses. So many facts of this are just great. Uh, there's some great scary scenes in here. There's a scene with a skeleton that was fun. There was a pit scene that kind of didn't make any sense on one of the options you got to choose. You come across some things like a literal ghost town. <laughs> you know, a ghost town is usually a description for like an abandoned town and from the Midwest type of thing. For like, you know, you see these films like Western movies and stuff. It's kind of like if you saw one of those now, you know, like old buildings that were kind of left behind out in the woods and desert and stuff. You come across things like that that are like a literal ghost town, you know? Really cool concept, stuff that I've never even thought of in years from old, like, Brady Bunch episodes and stuff that you think about. Uh, it was weird, just the concepts that Stein can use for these, or whoever puts a lot of these Goosebumps books together. It was cool seeing that kind of concept done here. It was just fun. The whole book was freaking fun. It was a great way to get my interest back into Goosebumps right now after taking a little bit of a break and a little bit of burnout getting into my system. This was such a fun, enjoyable read. And usually the Give Yourself Goosebumps books are that kind of solution when you're kind of burnt out on the regular, typical stories that are like 120 pages from Goosebumps. Because these have so many options, they have a lot of creativity thrown into them. It takes the right person to write this kind of book. And I don't know whether Stein put this together or whoever did it, but it's great. It's really fun, it's really enjoyable. My only nitpick is the pit scene, right? When you get trapped in the pit by Dr. Crom Com Comstock, Cromstock, whatever his name is. This is not really a spoiler. It's one of the main options later on in the stories, no matter which story you go to. This doctor you encounter asks you to help him with an experiment, and he pushes you into a pit, and he does something to you in that pit. And essentially, at one point, you have like four options to choose on how to get out of this pit, and one of them leads you to an option that has nothing to do with the pit at all. And it was kind of like the first time I've ever read a Give Yourself Goosebumps book and got an option that didn't make sense because it didn't fit into what you were dealing with, you know? It was like an error in editing that they didn't catch. It's the first time I've ever seen that with the options you get to choose for the Choose Your Own Adventure Give Yourself Goosebumps books. It was very weird, very much caught me off guard, took me out of the adventure a little bit. I want to let you know that ahead of time that that was an issue here. I've never seen it in any of these books ever. And I wonder if, anybody, if anyone else has ever spotted that or ever talked about that. I don't know. Uh, my friend Ryan, who comments on a lot of my videos, I'd love to hear if he's read this and if he's seen in the comments, or not in the comments, in this book, if, if he's read this one. If he saw that there too, because it's really weird. It kind of threw me off, honestly. I had to keep going back and forth to make sure I went to the right page. 
Uh, but anyway, when it comes to this book, I had a blast. I had a really good time. I'm really thankful this is the video I got to make. And a positive video on top of that for a first book review I get to do after a little while of a break, essentially. And I'm sorry again for that very long break I had. But when it comes to Give Yourself Goosebumps Power Play Special Edition number five, The Curse of the Cave Creatures, I really enjoyed this. I think if you love fantasy or Goosebumps specifically or Give Yourself Goosebumps or anything like that, if you like more of the, the different, not typical horror Goosebumps stuff, if you want something different and really fun and lighthearted and enjoyable, this is totally the way to go, dude. It's just a great, great book really enjoyed this tremendously it took me forever to read it just because of the burnout on reading and whatnot here lately but man it was good it was a really good time i really had a blast reading this uh what did you think about this did you love it did you hate it put your thoughts and comments down below i would love to hear what you guys have to say about this one this is one of the better of the special edition books the special edition books from give yourself goosebumps they tend to try new things they try to buy they tend to try to be experimental a little bit and uh, i was worried about this one this is not one of the books i was excited to read at any point and i wanted to go ahead and do it for the summer reads and I'm glad I did. This is a really fun, enjoyable book. I wish I'd been able to sit down and just kind of read through the whole thing, but the burnout, again, kind of affected me a little bit. Very enjoyable read. Really good. Really fun. But anyway, when it comes to this book, if I had to give it a five, or on a five-star basis for rating, I'd probably give it a four out of five. It's really good for what it is. It's a really enjoyable, fun read. It's not just a kid's book. There's a lot of very kind of creepy moments in here, like the skeleton thing. It was just a, a wild concept. I've never seen skeletons do something like that skeleton does in this book. Never in any other media, ever, movies or anything. As much as I love old, like, black and white horror films, I've never seen that concept used there. Uh, it was cool. Really cool. A lot of good stuff in here. Really recommend it, honestly, for anybody who hasn't read it. Um, as far as I remember, I don't think this is one of the harder special edition books to find. I could be wrong about that, but I don't think it was, at least currently, right now, in 2020. Anyway, what are your thoughts? Put everything down below. I'd love to hear what you guys have to say about it. Thank you for being patient with me, and thank you for sticking around. There's so much stuff happening right now with my job, and... The wedding coming up next month and <laughs> so much stuff, dude. Playing Silent Hill 4 was extremely high on my importance list right now, too, uh, amidst everything else I was dealing with. Anyway, <laughs> thank you guys for watching. God bless you guys so much, and goodbye.